Greetings Captains and welcome to this X-Plane 10 video. I'm sure many of you have seen a lot of photoreal scenery in X-Plane videos recently. And I have received numerous requests to do a tutorial on how to create photoreal scenery for X-Plane. So in this video I'm going to show you the most basic way to create photoreal scenery for X-Plane. So without further ado, Captains, let us begin. Today we're going to be taking a look at a donationware tool called G2XPL. While the application is available for download free of charge, it has some limitations. You can only create photoreal textures with Zoom Level 17 with the free version. If you wish to create photoreal textures with higher resolutions, you will need to make a donation to the developer. I highly recommend that you do make a donation to the developer to help him with further developments of the tool. Once you make a donation to the developer, you will receive the unlimited and latest version of G2XPL. The first thing we want to do is we want to extract this folder to G2XPL 6.9. Inside this folder you will find uh, some documentation and some release notes. I'm going to go ahead and remove those for the time being. You will end up with the G2XBL64 version 6.9 zip and the NVTT CUDA. The first thing, we will extract the contents of this folder. Now I'm going to rename G2XBL to uh, 64 version 6.9 to G2XBL. This is just for easy reference. If you have a CUDA capable graphic card, go ahead and extract the contents of this folder and move the nvtt.dll to the g2xpl folder and replace. Now we are going to delete those and now the only file we have is the g2xpl folder. If you click on the G2XPL folder, you'll find a series of files. We are interested now in G2XPL.ini. The first thing you want to do is you want to specify the explain directory. So you will go to explain. The easiest way to do this is go to C and explain. And now just click here. And now this is the actual path to your explain folder. We will copy this and we will paste it into the explain directory. The next thing you want to do is you want to specify that your NVIDIA CUDA is uh, available. So I'm going to change this to yes. And I'm going to save this file. And now we are pretty much good to go. What we need to do next is we need to move one file to the root plugins folder of Xplane. If you go to G2XPL folder, you will find a G2XPL underscore 64.xpl. Copy this file and move it to your Xplane root plugins folder and paste it. That's the file right there. And the last step we want to do to complete the installation is to move the G2XPL folder to our plugins folder of Xplane. So I'll copy that and go to Xplane 10, Resources, Plugins, and paste the file here. That's the file. The final structure now should be G2XPL folder in your plugins folder and the g2xpl underscore 64.xpl in the root plugins folder. Okay. If you click here and check on the INI file, you will see that I have the explain directory set to my root explain folder and NVIDIA CUDA acceleration is enabled. The next thing you want to do now is run explain. And once you, run X, once you run Xplane, you will receive a prompt to locate the g2xpl.exe folder. And the only thing you need to do is to browse to your g2xpl folder 
and select the g2xpl.exe. Okay, let's fire up explain and create some photoreal scenery. If the installation is successful, you should receive this box as soon as Xplane launches uh, at the desired location using path, which is the path of the exe file, that the g2xpl.ini file has been read successfully and that the plugin has been initialized successfully. We'll go ahead and close this window now. We are currently situated at Sedona um, Airport in uh, the state of Arizona in the United States and we're going to create the scenery for this location. Let me change the time here so we can see what's going on. Okay, so this is the uh, this is the area. It's a nice area to create a photoreal scenery for. So let us begin. All right, so the first thing we'll go to plugins, G2XPL launcher, G2XPL general settings. I'm not going to go through the settings in excruciating detail, but I will pinpoint the most important features. So the first one is the texture zoom level LOD. This is how high the texture resolution is going to be. Now remember, the higher the resolution, the bigger the files. And also, uh, watch your frames. Uh, so higher resolution textures will affect your frames. Now I can go up to 19. 19 is the maximum zoom level. And you can go uh, down to uh, 12. That's the lowest you can go. For the purpose of our video today, we will stay at zoom level 17. High resolution texture radius in meters. Now, what this, the bigger this number is, the more low resolution textures will be created to complement the scenery. If you set this to zero, then all the tiles will be created with high resolution. Okay, And what this means is that for the position of the airplane, the immediate area, uh, high resolution textures will be created. Now the areas surrounding the um, airplane position will be created by uh, with uh, lower resolution textures. The high resolution textures are about 10.6 megabyte a piece and the lower resolutions one uh, are about uh, 171 kilobytes when using texture zoom level 17. Okay. Another important feature is the blank pixel threshold. I have set this as 95. Now, what this means is that as G2XPL downloads the images, it will check to make sure that any image that has 5% uh, blank area will be accepted. Anything with more than 5% blank, uh, it will be rejected and it will go and try to download uh, another picture to replace it. The recommended value here is between 80 and 95. If you set it at 80, for example, this will mean that pictures with 20% blank in them will be accepted. Anything more than 20% will be rejected and G2XPL will try to download a, a, a replacement image. Create nine textures. I think this is self-explanatory. I'm not going to tick that. I'm going to use the NVIDIA CUDA for creating DDS textures. Pause explain after the scenery is created. And normally uh, what happens uh, afterwards is that explain is paused and the textures are loaded. If they are not loaded, you probably need to exit explain and uh, restart it. And we are not going to be covering the water areas and we are going to remove beach information. Now, just one note on, uh, on the water areas. If you select cover water areas, uh, it will place textures on top of the water uh, bodies. So you will lose the explain water. You will just have an image. Uh, at at higher uh, altitudes, uh, like 35, 40,000 feet, it may look uh, somewhat realistic. It may look good, um, but I, I prefer to uh, see explain water when I'm in the sim. Okay, we just say apply data and close. And now we'll go to G2XPL launcher again. This time we'll go to G2XPL internet services settings. 
The first thing you want to specify is the GPLX uh, scenery name. Um, I always put three trailing Z's so that it places this, um, it places the folder at the lowest uh, priority. Uh, it's just, it helps me uh, save one step, which is going back to the INI file and editing, editing the location uh, in the scenery.ini file. So we'll say Sedona. Sedona is Kilo Sierra Echo Zulu. And this is now where it gets interesting. For some reason, I couldn't get the Google service to work. Um, and some of these services are only for the US, some of them are for Scandinavia, some of them are just for Poland. Uh, the full explanation of these uh, services and their coverage uh, is in the uh, FAQ file uh, that comes with your download. What I've done the first time is I've checked all of these and G2XPL will, uh, and by the way, these are listed in the priority. So if it finds the first one, it will go with it. If it can't, it will go to the next one and the next one until it finds a service uh, that is active and is uh, able to um, uh, provide the uh, the area of coverage that you want to create the photo textures for. So for now, I have OVI and MQCDN, and this is here. Um, it allows you to either specify the current plane position, or you can manually enter your coordinates, your uh, latitude and longitude. So I'm just going to say. Um, current plane position and now we are good to go and I'm just going to say apply data and launch g2xpl.exe you will get a command prompt and then it will start doing some funny things here okay so now it is actually creating the folder and putting the uh, the DSF information for this location Okay, so right here it's saying calculating how many JPEG textures to download and DDS textures to create. And as you can see, it's saying now approximately 284 MB of disk space required for new textures, creating 696.dds textures and downloading textures data. And now it has begun with creating the textures. So I want to show you what is actually going on now. If I go to explain folder and I go to custom scenery, you will see that there is now a folder called ZZZ underscore KSEZ, which is Sedona. And the files have been created. So EarthNav data has been created. And if you go to the textures, you will see now the textures are being created. Okay. All right, so we will wait until the, uh, until the process is complete. Okay, it's gonna take some time, so I'll see you once this is over. As you can see, captains, we now have photo real textures for Sedona in the state of Arizona. Of course, you are free to experiment with the zoom levels and radius to create even better resolution and better textures uh, for x -Blade. I hope that this has been an informative and useful video. If you have any questions, please do ask me in the comments section below. Until next time, please take care of yourselves and each other. Thank you so very much for watching and I will see you next time.